Welcome to part 4, the last of the series on using the printed PRDH for your French-Canadian research. This is Sandra Goodwin from Maple Stars and Stripes, your French-Canadian genealogy podcast at maplestarsandstripes.com. If you have not yet viewed Using the Printed PRDH Parts 1 through 3, I'd suggest you do so in order before viewing this video, as each video builds on the previous one. In video 3, we took a detailed look at how to read the baptism, marriage, and burial records. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to read some of the other lesser-known records that are available to us. Several censuses are scattered throughout the 47 volumes. First, we have the censuses of 1666, 1667, and 1681 as well as the 1699 census of Mont-Louis found in Volume 6. The 1716 census of Quebec can be found in Volume 8, the 1700 census of Mont-Louis in Volume 11, the 1744 census of Quebec in Volume 18, and the 1760 census of Trois-Rivières, the 1762 census of Quebec, and the partial 1765 census in Volume 47. This is a typical census page. In the center, we have the parish name, Notre Dame de Montréal, indicated by the 391 in the upper right corner. In the upper left, it tells us that this is the census of 1666, also indicated by the R in the upper right corner. The census records can consist of typical households consisting of parents and children, like the families on the left side, but there are also atypical households, like those on the right, which lists several single male household servants. Let's take a look at the Gilles Lauzon household, which is Ménage 92 or Household 92. The first line tells us his occupation, a chaudronnier or coppersmith, the first entry in Group 61 in Appendix 1 in the key, as well as an habitant or planter. Some versions of the volume simply give the occupation group number instead of the word. Gilles is the husband of person 2. He's 35 years old, married, present, and male. He also resides in that parish. The second line consists of his wife, Maria Chambeau, also residing in that parish, wife of person number 1. She is 22 years old, married, present, and female. Following the parents are their four daughters, Michelle, Marguerite, Françoise, and Marie. All reside in that parish. They're all the daughters of Gilles and Marie, and they're all single, present, and female. The daughters range from eight years to two years of age. Annulments can be found in Volume 6 and Volume 46, with annulment witnesses found also in Volume 46. Here is a sample record. In this case, it's not the marriage itself, but the marriage contract that was annulled on August 1, 1663, between Matarine de Bord and Pierre Bessonnet. Notice in line 3 we find the listing for a Pierre Guiberge, who is the époux or husband of person number 1, Matarine. But notice also in the next to the last column there is a D for deceased. In other words, this was her first husband or prior husband, and she is presently a widow. There is an explanation at the bottom that tells us that the marriage contract was annulled because Pierre already had a wife in France. Here is a list of mostly children, but occasionally an adult, receiving his or her confirmation. The listed ages may help you determine whether or not one of these is your ancestor. Confirmation lists can be found in Volume 46. Hospital patients are also enumerated in several places. The Hôtel Dieu de Québec lists can be found in Volumes 3, 8, 18, 31, and 46. The Hôpital Général de Québec records are found in Volumes 8, 18, and 31. Records for the Hôpital Général de Montréal can be found in Volumes 6, 13, 24, 37, and 46. 
And finally, the records for the Hôtel Dieu de Montréal are found in volume 37. At the top right of each group of names is the date of admission to the hospital. These two people were admitted on February 6, 1693. These lists include the name of the person and how long they were hospitalized. In these two cases, 23 days and 17 days respectively. The French word jour means days. It tells you in which parish they resided and their ages. Jean was from the parish of Notre-Dame de Quebec and he was 30 years old when admitted to the hospital. René, a 43-year-old male, was from the parish of St. Bernard. Marriage contracts are found in Volume 6, which means they are available only for the 17th century. This is a legal document whereby each party specified such information as what property was being brought into the marriage by each party or how property would be divided upon death. This particular example shows a marriage contract between Nicolas Roussin and Madeleine Paradis, dated November 28, 1667. The R colon indicates each of their resident parishes, he in Ange Gardien and she in Notre Dame des Anges. The parents are listed and we notice that the mother of Nicolas, Mère de One, is deceased at the time of this contract. It also tells us that the father of the bride is a maître coutelier or master cutler. Coutelier is the second occupation in Group 62 in Appendix 1 of the key. And finally, on the last line, we have the name of the notary, Paul Vachon. To get the details of this marriage contract, you would want to look up the records of Paul Vachon for this date in 1667. Also found scattered throughout these volumes are lists of immigrants. Some of them were soldiers, some were people known as engagés or people who were hired to come to New France for a particular job for a stipulated period of time, as well as a few extant passenger lists. Lists of engagés can be found in volume 6 and 46 and immigrants and naturalizations are also found in volume 46. Here's an example of one such list dated April 1st, 1643. It shows the first person, Mathieu Favel. The P colon for profession indicates his occupation was a soldat or soldier. The O colon tells us his origins were in Tarouve, Perche in France. Our second person, Antoine Cheffaut de la Renardière, is a nobleman and director of the Compagnie de la Nouvelle France. Then at the bottom, it tells us the details of the arrangement. Mathieu Fauvel est engagé pour trois ans means that he was hired for a period of three years. The last part of that phrase tells us that he was hired for 60 livres per year, having received 30 in advance. As stated earlier, you will also find abjurations, which are when people renounce their Protestant faith in volumes 6 and 46. Acts recorded by the Jesuits in Volume 6, and marriage rehabilitations in Volume 46. A marriage might have to be rehabilitated if it took place, for example, in New England. When the Acadians were dispersed along the east coast of the American colonies, many of them got married there and then later made their way to Quebec. Once in Quebec, they would have their marriage rehabilitated or blessed by the priest. Records from select missions are in Volumes 5 and 33. That covers most of what you'll find in the printed PRDH. Hopefully it's not such a mystery anymore. Again, if you'd like your own copy of the key to the repertory, go to maplestarsandstripes.com slash newsletter. While you're there, be sure to check out the podcast and show notes for the PRDH episode at maplestarsandstripes.com slash 26. I'm sure you'll find something you can use to make researching your French-Canadian ancestors a bit easier. And be sure to subscribe to the Maple Stars and Stripes YouTube channel to be notified of upcoming videos. Thanks to the folks at the University of Montreal who brought this wonderful research tool to all of us. Well, now that you've learned how to use these volumes, there's nothing left to do but just dive right in and give it a try. Thank you for watching.